talk is uh, all right. Uh, so welcome back to Condensed Matter in the Cities. Uh, we have our second talk, uh, evening talk of today. And uh, we're delighted to have um, Aronoff uh, Kapitolnik as our speaker. Um, the talk is uh, around about 45 minutes with a, a 45 minutes of discussion, so an hour and a half in total. Um, Aaron Kapitolnik is a uh, Professor of Applied Physics at Stanford University. I believe he's also uh, has an appointment, um, a special, special professorship at Tel Aviv University. He's won numerous awards, including the Kamalinga Onis uh, Prize in 2009 and uh, a medal or award from the American Physical Society in 2015 and many more. Um, He's talking to, today to us about ex experimental search for car or superconductors. Uh, if you have questions uh, and you don't know how it works, then please uh, raise your question in the chat. We'll try and take questions as we go along, as well as in the discussion session at the end. Okay, it's over to you, uh, Aaron, and thank you very uh, much. Thank you uh, very much uh, for the uh, English. I'm saying English, not British. Uh, I understand you are in Scotland. Uh, congratulations, uh, <laughs> two beautiful goals. Um, he should have uh, put Grealish right at the beginning, but anyway, um, to the topic. Um, so um, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I wanna talk today about uh, uh, chiral superconductors, but in particular, um, I was asked and I will do, hopefully with, uh, with uh, time allowing uh, to talk about the uranium tellurium two, which uh, I assume uh, uh, John Pierre uh, talked about uh, earlier uh, today. So uh, this is the group uh, from the person who first constructed the apparatus. I'm going to use uh, Jing Xia to Elizabeth Chen, Eli, Didi, Yang, David, who is now the student uh, doing these experiments. Uh, um, Theory uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, supported by uh, Daniel Achterberg, Jörg Schmalian, and, and Ronnie Tumale. Uh, and uh, the um, uh, Uranium Platinum uh, three work uh, was done in collaboration with Bill Halperin uh, and uh, the Uranium Tellurium two with uh, the, uh, John Pierre Paglion and Nick Butch from University of Maryland. And there were other materials we studied I will not be able to talk about today uh, for time. Uh, some other collaborations are, are mentioned here. So um, uh, let me uh, go uh, uh, very fast uh, over the introduction. I was not sure, um, uh, you know, many of you, I mean, it's, it's physics in the city and, and people can come from different parts of the city. So I need to, bring everybody uh, to, the, to the, I don't know, Oxford Square or something. Uh, so um, let's uh, uh, um, have some, uh, uh, basically a background. So um, uh, talking about pair wave function of a superconductor, uh, if I'm looking inside the center of mass, I have an orbital part and a spin part, and I need to make sure that the, the uh, pair wave function is totally anti-symmetric uh, as it is for two electrons. Uh, and this immediately uh, give two possibilities, either spin singlet uh, that is uh, uh, S equal to zero, uh, and then the angular momentum has to be uh, even or, or odd parity, which the angular momentum is, is, is odd and this, uh, it's a spin triplet uh, superconductor. I will talk interchangeably about the, the pair wave function or the gap, or the gap function, uh, which are just proportional uh, to each other. Now, uh, in the, the most general form, uh, if I want to use uh, uh, these two types of, of uh, symmetry, uh, the singlet and the triplet uh, can be written in this way where uh, sigma are the Pauli uh, matrices. And this is now the, the gap function that for the singlet superconductor is, is, is a, uh, written uh, uh, like that as a scalar, but for the uh, triplet, uh, it's a vector called the D vector. Uh, which will depend on the on the uh, uh, wave vector k uh, dotted with the uh, Pauli uh, matrix uh, as needed, 
uh, the the uh, um, gaps, uh, whether uh, it's uh, in the singlet or triplet representation, uh, um, is such that delta of minus k, delta of k for the singlet, uh, for the for delta and d of minus k is minus d of k for the for the triplet. Now, for even uh, parity, the uh, the gap simply uh, resides in the uh, of diagonal uh, parts uh, uh, um, of the of the gap uh, can be written in this way. Uh, where for a triplet, um, I have a combination which, if I use the the components uh, of the d vector, I can write, for example, uh, choosing uh, a z direction as a principal direction. Uh, I can write it uh, in this way. So this is just uh, uh, a representation. Um, and um, talking about uh, symmetry, um, I can, I need to, I will need to, to discuss the full symmetry of the, of the crystal, uh, which uh, uh, will have uh, many uh, 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 parts to it, uh, full spin ro rotation group, uh, uh, point group of the crystal, time reversal identity, a uh, plus identity. I'm going to add to the time reversal the identity uh, and, and the U1 group, uh, uh, and each one of them can be, can be broken. And, and I will need to make sure that, that uh, uh, when I assign a superconducting uh, wave function, uh, it, it agrees uh, with all the symmetries that exist in the, in the crystal. So uh, the superconducting state, that is, if I consider the center of mass of the Cooper pair, uh, will break uh, the U1 symmetry, but there may be other symmetries that, that can be broken simply because there, there are internal degrees of freedom uh, within the center of mass of the, of the uh, Cooper pair. Uh, in particular, we will be interested in time reversal symmetry breaking or inversion symmetry breaking, uh, either one, uh, uh, and, and uh, um, we'll see these uh, are coming along. Uh, when we'll talk about the, the real materials. So the time reversal operator uh, has two, comp two parts to it. It's an anti-unitary op uh, operator. Uh, it has the uh, simple complex conjugation if you don't have spin consideration, but if you do, then uh, you also have the spin rotation uh, uh, part such that uh, uh, the, the total uh, 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 time reversal operator is, as I said, anti-unitary. Applying it now to the to the uh, uh, general form of the gap function, uh, I apply it to the singlet part. So uh, the, the sigma square is one. Uh, so therefore I am left with the, with the uh, complex conjugation. Uh, uh, simply uh, uh, same here, I'm left with the uh, d vector uh, 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 part and applying now the complex conjugation, uh, then uh, uh, it simply takes the complex conjugate of whatever is left which give me now the condition for uh, preserving time res uh, reversal, uh, which is that delta equal to uh, its complex conjugate. Okay, no surprise. But what it also means is that if time reversal symmetry is broken, uh, then delta uh, is not equal to its complex conjugate. Uh, and therefore I can write delta, the, the, the gap function, uh, as uh, has in, having two parts, the real and imaginary part. And uh, in a way, and, and this is going to be a very general uh, uh, consideration and sim similarly, uh, although more com complicated in, in writing it uh, for the D vector, if I have a triplet uh, superconductor, but here is an example of a, 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 simple, a simple example of, of the so-called uh, P wave, uh, P plus IP superconductor, uh, in which the d vector uh, points in the z direction, uh, but the angular momentum is in the plane. Okay, this is the uh, if you for all those that remember, this is the uh, um, uh, symmetry that was assigned first uh, to strontium ruthenate. Uh, now it's being challenged uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, okay, so uh, uh, people people talk uh, recently about topological superconductors. So let me just mention. Uh, that that uh, the, the, the reason uh, of talking about topological superconductors in the context of time reversal symmetry breaking um, is that, that uh, there is an analogy between uh, superconductors and insulators. In an insulator, uh, there is a, a gap in the, in the 
uh, um, uh, bulk of the material, so is a superconductor. It has a, a, a the, the superconducting gap, uh, and and uh, the surface may be uh, uh, different, may be topological. Uh, for topological insulators, uh, uh, you'll have a a, 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 a a conducting surface for topological superconductors. You may have uh, excitations such as Majorana fermions that will run around uh, the, the superconductor. So um, when time reverse symmetry is broken uh, in a topological superconductor, uh, it's called a chiral superconductor, okay? So that's uh, uh, basically connecting uh, uh, it to connecting this, this topic to the subject uh, of, the, of the talk, which is chiral uh, superconductors. Uh, time reversal symmetry invariant topological superconductors are very much like uh, uh, time reversal symmetry uh, preserving topological insulators, uh, those that will have uh, two counter propagating edge states. Uh, so uh, really the, the correspondence is, is rather uh, simple. Um, so talking about topological superconductors, uh, we can talk about those with a full gap, uh, those with a, a not having a full gap and, and uh, such as nodal uh, topological superconductors, that is topological superconductors that will exhibit uh, nodes and therefore uh, there will be um, uh, um, quasi-particles uh, present. Uh, and there are examples, I mean, the, the, uh, for, uh, for these, I mean, the, the helium 3A, for example, um, uh, has uh, uh, nodes, but um, th that's the that's the at 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 the uh, uh, poles. Um, there are also, although I don't think I will have time to talk about uh, non-central symmetric superconductors, uh, where inversion symmetry is broken, uh, parity uh, is is not uh, well defined, and and spin singlet and, and triplet may be allowed together, and you'll have some interesting uh, uh, situations. Uh, yttrium platinum bismuth uh, is is uh, 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 supposed to be one because yttrium platinum bismuth, a half Hoistler that that is a non-central symmetric uh, superconductor. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, actually, it exhibits a, a very interesting uh, effects. But I, I'm not sure I'll have time to talk about it. You can ask questions, of course. Um, so uh, in a review paper a few years ago, uh, Yonezawa had a table. Uh, of classification of those topological uh, superconductors uh, and uh, those that do break time reversal symmetry, those that preserve time reversal symmetry, and those that time reversal symmetry is already broken in the normal in the normal state, uh, such as uh, ferromagnetic uh, um, uh, superconductors, um, and and uh, among the time reversal symmetry breaking superconductors, probably the most famous one is strontium. Uh, ruthenate, so into ruthenium O4, uh, although uh, probably the, the actual uh, assignment of, of, the, of the symmetry is not, is not yet fully done. Uh, people thought it, it is. Uh, but one that, that seems to be uh, resolved is uh, UPT3 uh, and, and uranium ruthenium 2 silicon 2. Uh, and uh, I will talk later about uh, the first one and especially. Uh, it's two phases and the one that does break uh, time reversal symmetry. Uh, of the, those that exhibit uh, ferromagnetism or, or uh, in the case of uranium tellurium II, uh, paramagnetic, uh, uh, strong paramagnetic behavior with probably a ferromagnetic state at zero temperature, uh, uh, then uh, uh, this is going to be my second uh, example. So there is one thing though that I want to, uh, uh, to mention uh, which uh, which is quite interesting. It bears on on several uh, uh, parts of this of this talk uh, on the yttrium platinum bismuth, which I'm not going to talk about, but also on the ability to observe uh, uh, time reversal symmetry breaking uh, in the in the uh, uh, in in such uh, uh, superconductors uh, and and uh, um, it goes as follows. Uh, let's assume uh, that I have uh, a time reversal symmetry broken uh, superconductor, um, uh, which has uh, therefore the gap function has a real and imaginary part. Uh, as I said, the simplest example is is a, a, a P wave P plus IP, 
uh, there is an amplitude delta naught, and then and then uh, uh, you have a Cooper pair that going uh, clockwise or counterclockwise in the x y uh, plane. So uh, let's assign now the two components. Uh, delta x will be delta naught times k x. Delta y is i times delta naught uh, k y. Obviously, in the in the uh, um, uh, uh, both cases uh, 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 here, uh, uh, U1 is broken in the superconducting state, that is delta naught is finite. However, uh, uh, above TC in the normal state, uh, U1 is not broken and delta X equal to delta Y equal to zero, simply because delta naught is equal to zero. However, I continue here with the however, I can, uh, since, since the time reversal symmetry breaking uh, is a discrete symmetry, uh, um, that time reversal is a discrete symmetry. I can actually construct a bilinear of this form, for example. So delta X uh, complex conjugate delta Y minus delta Y complex delta X, which uh, as you can see immediately, uh, U1 is, is, is gone because of the, uh, the fact that it comes up front as the overall phase in the, in the center of the center of mass. Uh, and, and this now define a new order parameter phi that could be different than zero. In fact, even in the fluctuating regime above TC were of the zero resistance, right? So uh, in principle, when, when the superconductor fluctuates and both delta X, delta Y fluctuate, uh, I may have a situation in which time reversal symmetry can be broken already above TC. This kind of construction, bilinear uh, construction, is also important, as I will show you shortly, uh, in cases uh, that, that uh, uh, you only have, uh, uh, as, as we will see, if you only have the center of mass, uh, then uh, the optical probes that we are going to use uh, will yield uh, a zero result unless there is uh, a, a situation of, of multi-component, uh, for example, due to, to uh, multi-band uh, superconductivity. So uh, for above TC, that is related to yttrium platinum bismuth, but uh, I'm not sure, as I said, that I'll talk about it. So I want to test for the time of asymmetry breaking with light. Okay, so light, uh, if you take a, a plane wave, you go in the Z direction. Uh, if you apply the time reversal operator, you go in the minus Z direction. So just a complex conjugation uh, applied, applied to, the, to the electric field. Um, and if you put these uh, uh, together, uh, then in a material that breaks time reversal symmetry, uh, for example, uh, a ferromagnet, uh, then the eigenstates of the light uh, are uh, given in terms of polarization is the two circular polarization, the right and left circular, circularly polarized light. So if E small e are the, the linear polarization in the X and Y direction, uh, these are the two circular polarizations. And the signature is that the indices of refraction for right, let's call it plus, I mean, it's arbitrary, and left circularly polarized light, the, the, the indices of refraction are different from each other, okay? For a material uh, in which uh, um, time reversal symmetry is not broken, uh, then uh, these two, uh, is ex uh, uh, two, two indices of refraction are expected uh, to, be, to be the same. This yield the two uh, basic phenomena uh, that, that we will use to test time reversal symmetry breaking, Faraday effect, uh, which is you take a linearly polarized light, uh, which is of course made of the two circular polarization. And uh, because it's made of the two circular polarization and the index of refraction for right and left circularly polarized is different, then you'll get a finite rotation of the, of the polarization uh, that has to do with the difference between these two indices of refraction. So if, if they are the same, then, then you don't have a Faraday effect. If they are different, you have a Faraday effect. Now, similarly for reflection, and reflection will be important because most of the materials we will use are single crystals, and therefore we will measure them uh, using reflection. Uh, uh, there will be bulk crystals. Uh, some actually are uh, rather large, 
uh, and and uh, therefore the care effect is also now the imaginary part of this difference of of the complex indices of refraction for uh, right and left circularly polarized light uh, divided by uh, this combination. But otherwise, it really reflects the idea that that these two indices of refraction uh, are are different. Okay. So, um, if I again start with this canonical example of, of a P-wave superconductor that is P plus IP, I can uh, uh, visualize it as two electrons, I mean, the Cooper pair, which are going clockwise or counterclockwise in the, X, in the XY plane, uh, exhibiting uh, uh, angular momentum plus one or minus one, okay? Uh, and if I condense into the superconducting state with one of those uh, angular momenta, then I can calculate a magnetic moment associated with each Cooper pair, add them all together. So I multiply it by the uh, superfluid density, which, the, which is, if you want, the number, the density of the, of the number of pairs, and I get a magnetization, okay? If I now take this, if I now take this, uh, magnetization and I want to calculate from it an anomalous current uh, that because I want to calculate uh, a, 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 an off diagonal conductivity that is the source of uh, those, those effects, the Faraday or Kerr effect, uh, then a very simple calculation. I take the curl of the, that, that uh, anomalous magnetization. Uh, I can then uh, rewrite it in terms of uh, 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 the direction, the preferred direction, which I chose a Z cross with the gradient of the, of the chemical potential. And for a superconductor, the chemical potential is, is uh, uh, simply uh, giving as 2E times the, the voltage, uh, and then the, the part associated with the, the time derivative of the phase, and the part associated with the with the vector potential. Taking all these together, I take the, uh, the gradient of it and I get that. This is to calculate the, the anomalous current that will yield a care effect. And what do I get? Zero. Why? If you didn't recognize it earlier, you should, you should have, because E equal to DDT of this term is the London equation and therefore minus E plus this term is zero. So in principle, I should not observe a curve effect, but really this calculation was done with respect to the center of mass of the Cooper pair. And that's uh, uh, a very important thing because now I will search for superconductors uh, that will exhibit some, something in the center of mass that will allow for a finite curve effect. Otherwise, care effect is zero, okay? So of course, one thing that, that can happen is uh, if I break translation symmetry and therefore all these uh, arguments are, are, are gone uh, and, and uh, I can get a finite care effect, which is really uh, unpredictable depending on the impurities, uh, 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 the skew scattering, impurity concentration, et cetera, et cetera. And I will certainly see different results for different uh, uh, in different purity of the material, etc. This is probably not a very, a very good approach. Uh, uh, some of the materials I'm going to show you about, uh, especially uh, the, the UPT3 crystals coming from Northwestern, from the Bill Halperin group, uh, will have a triple R of order of a thousand. This is extremely pure material. In fact, uh, as he found in neutron scattering, as, and as I'll show you later in our result, domains of anything are enormous. And therefore the material is really very pure. So that's not the right, the right solution to obtain a finite care effect. The right solution is to have a multi-band superconductor. And, and for that, there is a lot of theory written recently, uh, um, uh, the, all the way to uh, the most recent classification by uh, Dennis and Bryden, uh, uh, where in fact they introduced uh, actually, this was introduced in a previous paper, but uh, they emphasized uh, the idea that if you can construct a, bi a bilinear uh, 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 term of the type that I showed you earlier, then you will have a finite care effect. Okay. Burn, yes. 
there's a question from Yorke. Would you like to ask your question, Yorke? Oh, sorry. I, I cannot yeah, sure. see our questions. No, no, don't worry. Uh, thank you. This is very interesting. I was just uh, wanted to ask you about what happens if uh, your Cooper pairs have a net spin and the time reversal symmetry breaking comes from the spins of the Cooper pairs lining up, not the angular momentum. Uh, would your argument still hold or do you well, in that in, case? Yeah, so in general, in general, uh, the, the, um, uh, in all these situations, the spin of the of the Cooper pair, uh, if you are in a spin one, that is that's what you're asking, right? If you have if you are in a triplet in a triplet uh, superconductor, uh, then then uh, uh, you will have you will have uh, uh, you will have uh, uh, unless there is a reason of polarization, uh, then the spin is going to be randomized. There are situations in which the spin uh, triplet can be polarized. Uh, for example, and I again, I, I don't have time to talk about it. I could show you, I, I could show you example. If you take uh, a, a, a S wave superconductor, you put it in a in in contact with a ferromagnet, uh, then uh, you can induce uh, a, a spin a spin uh, a, a triplet superconductivity in the uh, uh, superconductor, and it's going to be partially polarized because of the uh, polarization of the ferromagnet to which it is attached. And then you can have, basically, you will have a partial magnetization. It's extremely small in this situation. We were able to detect it uh, in, in, uh, in uh, 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 nickel lead uh, bilayers and, and, and others. Uh, but if you do have, if you do have it, uh, then, but this is not this is this is uh, uh, a really a secondary a secondary effect because if you just polarize uh, all the spins, then you have a ferromagnet. Well, you could have um, polarization of the spins of the Cooper pairs, and then it would be a bit like a bosonic ferromagnet with very very weak magnetization. So the origin is quite different from, say, stoner. But then you would have a net magnetization, which is a, a very small exchange field. So yeah, I would so, expect in that case, you do get a Kerr effect even the, in the homogeneous case, right? But, but, but in order to have a triplet, you already have uh, uh, a non-trivial uh, uh, angular momentum. So, um, um, okay, I mean- Well, no, no, not necessarily, because if you have an internal degree of freedom, like orbital degree of freedom, you could anti-symmetrize the wave function that way, and your gap could look still like an S-wave gap, but your Cooper pairs could be spin one. And then it's that kind of scenario I was thinking about. Okay. I, I, I mean, whether you believe it, it happens in any superconductor, but if you did have that, no, then so you would I, get a Kerr no, effect, right? So, I mean, the fact that it is possible to construct, I told you, I told you about a construction that we did in my lab. Uh, we fabricated mm -hmm. such bilayers, and we did observe a finite magnetization in the superconductor. Which was not dependent on defects or things like that. No, it was no, a bulk. No, Thank you. No. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, uh, by the way, the theory for that was first uh, 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 introduced by, by uh, um, um, Yefetov and, and, and Bergere and, and Volkov, I think, uh, in 2004 or something like that. Okay, so um, let me continue. And, and, and uh, basically we are looking at multi-band superconductors uh, in which you can either have uh, inter-band pairing and then, then it becomes uh, simple uh, or uh, even within intra-band uh, pairing, if you have uh, a situation uh, uh, by which you can construct a, 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 uh, uh, this bilinear term that I, that I uh, talked about, then the fact that that uh, the phase goes away, the, the the center of mass phase goes away, uh, allow you actually to uh, observe time reversal symmetry uh, breaking uh, even in that in that situation. So um, let me first give you a a uh, uh, an order of magnitude of what kind of order of magnitude of effect we are we are looking at. So um, um, if you uh, take the formula I showed you, which is uh, uh, for the uh, Kerr effect, which is the imaginary part of this uh, combination of the indices of refraction. 
and uh, you can you can rewrite because uh, indices of refraction come from from uh, the the uh, um, the electric function, which you can write in terms of the conductivity. Uh, you you do a few manipulations to find that in fact it is the imaginary part of the of the of the diagonal term of the of the uh, complex. Um, uh, uh, frequency dependent conductivity. And then you can you you can take a, some, any kind of, of uh, theory uh, to to estimate. So um, uh, one that that uh, is for example relies on on uh, on uh, uh, interband coupling was was uh, uh, proposed as I showed uh, here by by Taylor and, and Callen. so, I take their, their formula, you can then rewrite it. This is my way to rewrite it because it shows what's small, what's large. Uh, 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 always magneto-optic coefficients have upfront uh, defined structure. That's what makes them small. But in this case, there is another element that makes the, the, the uh, effect small, which is I'm going to detect uh, a, a, a something uh, that occurs on the scale of the gap which, and we are going to talk about superconductors with TC of around one Kelvin, okay? Uh, so the gap is, is very small. I'm going to interrogate them with light uh, with frequency uh, of about one and a half microns. That's the wavelength. Uh, the, the, there is a reason for that because uh, one can construct uh, extremely uh, 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 high, high quality instrumentation using these wavelengths, 1.55 microns, because this is the wavelengths of optical communication. So there is a, lots of advances in making components. Uh, and, and that's what we chose uh, to do. Uh, if you cannot do it in your head, 1.55 microns is 0.8 EV. So this is going by itself to be to give you something very small. OK, uh, and then the fine structure. This is the, the interband coupling, uh, uh, which is which is going to be uh, uh, reduced uh, also uh, by by some uh, 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 scaled by by some factor with dimensionless uh, parameter. If you put all these together, uh, believe me, you get something of order of fifty to a hundred nano radi radians. Now, for those that do magnetism, um, you will measure in the lab a radian, fraction of a radian. Uh, you are even able to do milli radians or fractions of them if you have good good equipment. But this is uh, 50 to 100 na radians, nano radians of the full signal, which means that if I want to resolve it, I need a few nano radians sensitivity. And this is really non-trivial, okay? I mean, think about, think about a, a, uh, a circle and the fact that now you, you have 10 to the eight segments of this circle and you need to resolve one of them, okay? That's non-trivial. So for that, we constructed uh, an apparatus uh, that that uh, answers the following requirements. Uh, one is it rejects by symmetry all reciprocal effects, uh, which is important because I don't need to modulate anything to extract my non-reciprocal as such as time reversal symmetry breaking effect. Second, it measures the absolute value. I don't I don't need to subtract two things uh, or something like that. Uh, and and uh, third, uh, it is indeed highly sensitive, and I can get to below 100 nano radians uh, uh, quite not easily, but uh, I can do it. The apparatus is based on the Sanyak effect. I don't have time to describe to you the Sanyak effect, uh, but it's basically think about. Uh, I mean, these are the components. I mean, there is a polarizer, there is a modulator. Uh, at the end, there is a single mode fiber, which is birefringent. And again, optical communication fibers are birefringent. If you didn't know, uh, then optical communication uses only one axis. If I am not mistaken, it's the slow axis uh, of that uh, fiber. But in principle, there are two axes. Uh, and therefore, if I launch uh, any light at 45 degrees to the axis, then I'm going to get two uh, uh, propagations, one which goes along the fast axis, the other along the slow axis. If I put now a quarter wave plate, as I show here, by the way, everybody sees the, 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 my arrow? Um, I hope so, uh, as I point here. So, yes, 
good. So, so this is a quarter wave plate. And if you go through the quarter wave plate, linearly polarized light becomes circular. So I bounce back the circular, goes through the uh, quarter wave plate, becomes linear again, but uh, because it bounces into the opposite direction, it changes 90 degrees and it, it therefore goes back in the opposite axis. These two are then coming to a photo detector where they interfere. And I therefore compare the, the response of the material to right and to left circularly polarized light. And, and, and that's it, okay? So anything that does not break time reversal symmetry uh, will give me the same magnitude, it cancels out. Only if time reversal symmetry is broken, I'm going to get some interference that is uh, shifted from simple a, a, a constructive interference. Uh, our, we have apparatus now that, that work uh, from 0.3 Kelvin uh, to room temperature. Uh, and, and as I said, our preferred, although we used several other wavelengths, our preferred one is 1.55 micron. And by symmetry of this apparatus, uh, it measures only non-reciprocal effect and time reversal symmetry breaking is such, okay? Okay. If I had a ferromagnet, what would I measure? So strontium ruthenium O3 is a ferromagnet below 150 degrees Kelvin. And if you measure it with this apparatus, you get, you see here, six micro radians, okay? Below the transition. In fact, if you do this measurement many, many times, you get sometimes positive, sometimes negative. And the reason is that the material breaks into domains. This is a thin film, and the film will break into domains roughly of the size of the, of the thickness of a few times the thickness of the film. And therefore, it's, it's the, it's the uh, a, a random distribution that has excess in one direction that gives you the signal. But if you, and, and, and indeed, uh, uh, here is a Lorentz microscopy of such of strontium ruthenate, and this is a, a, a drawn on it is the beam. This is the histogram that you get if you do it many, many times. And the, the width of the histogram is the true size of the signal, which you get if you simply measure it after training it with a finite magnetic field. And you know it, if you take a ferromagnet, you train it uh, as you cool it down through the Curie temperature, then it's fully magnetized. And that's what we measure. And you see here, it's already, 2000 micro radians as opposed to just a few or very close to zero uh, that you measure if it breaks into domains. That's what we will want to do also when we look at the measurements of the superconductors, okay? Okay, I assume that I don't need to give any, uh, even one slide uh, review of, of heavy fermions, uh, but the main part is that some heavy fermion uh, compounds may become superconductors and usually superconductivity in such systems is found to be unconventional uh, and, and, uh, and that's what we are going to explore right now. And, uh, and I wanna start, I wanna start with uh, UPT3, okay? Um, and uh, well, that's the paper that reported uh, that uh, we since had some other results, but uh, that these are the main results. And, and, and let me just show you the size of the crystal. This is, enormous crystal and, and this is the phase, the C-axis phase that we are that we are going to measure. We are going to measure. Okay, so here is the uh, crystal structure, uh, uranium atoms, platinum atoms. The important thing for us here is that indeed it is a multi-band superconductor. There are five bands here that cross the uh, uh, Fermi surface, okay? Now, uh, Early measurements of UPT3 showed antiferromagnetism, um, um, but I should say, and, and uh, um, what, what uh, I learned from Bill Halperin, uh, who continued to measure this, the better his samples, the, the less this is uh, observed. So it could be that the, this antiferromagnetism uh, was there simply because of local strain, impurities, uh, et cetera. In any event, if you do such an experiment, you wanna go through this temperature just to make sure that you don't see anything. Uh, the temperature at which it was seen in the 80s uh, was uh, about five Kelvin. And 
that's the care data, okay? And here it is magnified. And you'll see that uh, uh, this is a hundred nano radians, okay? That's, uh, and you see that many times you go back and uh, up and down, up and down, you don't see anything, okay? So obviously, of course, if the, if the magnetization uh, there was in the plane as it is proposed, I wouldn't see anything anyway in, in a care effect, uh, but uh, it was not seen even if I uh, uh, cooled in an applied field, as you can see here, uh, as, as there are some remnant things. So there's nothing there in that, uh, basically in, in agreement with uh, what Bill Halperin measured on, on, uh, on his uh, uh, samples uh, in, in other ways. Now, uh, UPT3 uh, was the, the first unconventional uh, superconductor, and, and this is uh, 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 due to several uh, measurements that, that uh, identified uh, the double transition, uh, uh, and then uh, therefore the two phases, the so-called A phase and B phase, uh, that's the double peak in the specific heat, and it was shown that this is not impurities, this is indeed uh, transition into another phase of the superconductor. Uh, this is the same uh, in ultrasonic uh, attenuation. Again, uh, remember, I will talk mostly about zero field, or uh, if at all, I will apply a very tiny field and then turn it off uh, and, and uh, uh, measure at zero, at zero field. Uh, but so I'm, I'm really along, along this line, uh, trying to see whether I can observe uh, anything between the A and the B phase, okay? Now, uh, first of all, um, uh, the other parameter of UPT3 uh, uh, was identified. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the, all the uh, arguments, but uh, some, of when, some of them are, are, men are, are listed here. The important thing, uh, and I'm saying it because if I will have time to talk about the, UP, uh, the uranium tellurium two, uh, then then uh, uh, there it's the it's not the same. Uh, the the symmetry allow for a two-dimensional representation, and the one that seem to fit uh, all results is the E to U representation, in which the A phase uh, has nodes, the B phase is nodeless, and break time reversal symmetry. You can consider it uh, in, the in the following, in the following uh, uh, way, as was in the paper of Andrew Huxley. Um, I, I, I didn't know that you will share, otherwise I will uh, make uh, the, it probably in, in much bigger font. Uh, um, anyway, uh, so this is basically uh, a, a, a PX plus IPY square uh, which, which uh, uh, once you square it, uh, you get a real part, uh, which is given by this uh, eta one, uh, that's the A phase, uh, which only the real part appears, but the B phase will allow for the imaginary part uh, that, that comes from this PX plus IPY square, uh, which is uh, uh, multiplied by, by uh, PZ. So here it's uh, KZ, KX, KY, okay? Uh, but the important thing is that it is an imaginary part, so time reversal symmetry uh, is is broken. Okay, uh, and uh, if if nothing else, then uh, we expect that the amplitudes uh, will have a simple gap uh, dependence, except that I take the square root because uh, the actual gap is the product is the uh, the, pro the the gap square is the product uh, of these two, which is uh, what we expect to measure in a normal care effect. So here is the measurement. I mean, to make sure that we, we obtain uh, the, the actual transition, we also uh, 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 introduce a, a mutual inductance or AC susceptibility with two coils, as you can see here. And here is the measurement. Uh, the blue uh, dots is the AC susceptibility. And as with always with AC susceptibility, it's roughly uh, where, the, where the transition onsets uh, into the inductive uh, 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 state uh, that that is the the uh, superconducting uh, transition uh, and so this is indeed the 0.55 the the A phase but the care effect which are these red dots you see nothing if you go to lower temperature though at around 0.46 there is an increase in the care effect that goes at 0.35 or I'll show you a little bit more uh, it goes to about 0.4 
microradians, that 400 nanoradians, okay? Now, so, okay, if there is time reverse asymmetry breaking associated with this care effect probing, then uh, it's only in the B phase, okay? And, and the red line is, is as I said, it's, it's what you expect from the product of these two uh, gap functions. Uh, of course, I cannot be sure. Um, we need more data uh, for that, but at least it's not inconsistent uh, with this temperature dependence. I want to make sure that, that uh, um, you know, uh, uh, at least the experimentalists among you would ask me, hey, how is your zero field? I mean, and then I will answer, well, the experiments I showed you, ex the, this experiment I showed you actually was done in, in, the, in Earth field, which uh, the, the component in the direction of the material was 0.2 Gauss. Um, so just to make sure, uh, we inserted uh, a, a uh, um, low temperature uh, mu metal shield uh, and measured uh, at an environment which we couldn't measure uh, uh, anything uh, above uh, two milligauss. So certainly it's better than two milligauss. And this is what you see. Remember what I showed you about the ferromagnet? That's exactly what you see here. I, and I'm showing here five different cooldowns. I could show you more, but at least with these five, you see that, that th there were two that, that, that they were negative, three that are, I mean, the, the orange, the, the red, and the triangles uh, like that are, are positive, and these two are negative. They go and, and give you roughly the same as we had before, same, same uh, size of, of effect, uh, which actually means that this is really a single domain, right? Because every time I get either positive or negative, but I get the same size. Indeed, if we train it with a field, okay, uh, that's the red and the blue, we train it with plus 50 Gauss, we get positive, we train it with minus 50 Gauss, we get negative, uh, and this is the positive with the with the um, uh, zero field that is L field. And you see that they just fall on top of each other. Again, what it means, single domain. And again, only the B phase is, I mean, you can see it also here. Only the B phase shows a care effect, nothing in the A phase, okay? Sorry. So this is our conclusion on the uh, uh, UPT3, uh, which is that, that uh, time reverse asymmetry is broken uh, in the B phase, uh, and there are several other uh, tests that, that we did. Now, uh, the next uh, uh, material, which I assume uh, John Pierre talked about, uh, Paglion talked about earlier, uh, is, the, is the uranium tellurium two. This is uh, a very interesting material. It's a nearly ferromagnetic spin triplet superconductor. And I will assume uh, that you uh, all uh, watched his talk. So it's going to be a very brief review. It's considered to be the end point of some ferromagnetic uh, superconductors. So uh, the idea is that here, uh, the ferromagnetic transition is a zero temperature, maybe quantum critical uh, point uh, uh, transition, but, the important thing here is that it is orthorhombic. And because it's orthorhombic, then it will, it will admit only one dimensional representation, which means that it's going to be very difficult to construct an order parameter, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is two dimensional. In order to do that, I will need two order parameters that are basically degenerate and, and, and come and come in, in 90 degrees to each other. Some of the normal state properties uh, show uh, susceptibility, uh, which is very, very anisotropic. Uh, uh, that is magnetization. Uh, uh, indeed, it's a heavy fermion. Uh, there is, uh, here is the, the, the uh, uh, very high resistivity uh, and, and, and uh, uh, no ferromagnetic uh, transition, here is hysteresis and there is nothing. And there is an attempt to, to assign to it a quantum critical. Uh, no, no. Oh. Uh, can I just interrupt quickly? There's a, there's a question from Tamanya um, Hasra. Okay. 
Oh, would, you sorry. Like, would you like to ask the question? Uh, okay. Sure. Um, I was wondering if the strength of the curve effect signal is the same, irrespective of which direction the training field is? Or can uh, you change the direction of the magnetic field and see a difference in the strength of this curve effect signal? Uh, you're talking about the, the these results. Yes, no, yes. It's exactly the same. And note here also, it is exactly the same in, in successive cooldowns, whether it decides to be positive or negative. That is the symmetry breaking is positive or negative. And, and, and that's what makes you believe that this is really an effect associated with the other parameter and not with anything that has to do. Th there is another uh, reason which I, 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 um, I, I could show you uh, um, some other, uh, it's it actually much more uh, pronounced in U uh, uranium tellurium too. Uh, but, but really this is, an ex it's an extremely important question and, and, and I should emphasize it more and more. This is really what convinced us that this is an order parameter effect and not, I don't know, vortices or something like that. In fact, uh, if, you, if you do magnetization of, on, of UPT3, uh, then you get a very different result. You have remanent magnetization that depends on the, on the field at which you cool all the way from, from, a, from, from one Gauss and up, the remanent magnetization. And, but remember, we measure at the center of the crystal, which is, almost a centimeter in size at the center. And when one measures magnetization, one actually is sensitive in the superconducting state to the, to the Meissner currents around. It's a very different type of measurements. We really probe the order parameter, an extremely important point. Uh, thank you. So, um, okay. So um, coming back to uranium tellurium too, I mean, I, I, I assume that I already have uh, minus, one minute. So, um, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, I have what three hours or something like that. So, um, and a half in total, so please, yeah, can carry on. So, um, okay. So, um, just to make sure, in the the superconducting state, uh, here is the transition. It's around uh, one point six uh, Kelvin. Uh, here is a uh, uh, specific heat, uh, uh, specific heat measurements. Uh, and uh, what we notice is indeed a very large uh, uh, um, uh, a, a, a Sommerfeld coefficient. Uh, for some reason, my spin susceptibility disappeared, uh, but you will see that there is nothing happening through TC. Oh, here it is. Nothing happening through uh, uh, TC as really pointing to a triplet uh, superconductor. Um, measurements of, of lower critical field uh, showed a very anomalous behavior. Uh, typically, you expect, uh, if you know the, the, the thermodynamic critical field, you expect that HC1, HC2 uh, uh, um, product will be roughly the, the, the thermodynamic critical field uh, square. Uh, it comes simply from the fact that one goes like one over lambda square, one goes like one over psi square, and this one, one goes like one over lambda psi. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, the anisotropy is really anomalous and, and really does not conform uh, with this relation. So this material is indeed anomalous. The, the hysteresis uh, loop is measured, again, I emphasize in magnetization measurements, which measure the full bulk of the material, uh, is, is, uh, which you can see is of order of, of a, a couple of millimeters, uh, shows very strong pinning, okay? I'm not sure I will have time to talk about pinning measurement with a with, uh, care effect, which is very interesting because I can measure exactly at the center of the material, okay? I can really verify the critical state to remind you the critical state says that, that there is a gradient of vortices and, and uh, up to a field at which for the first time there is vortex in, in the middle. Anyway, um, oh. Here is exactly what I wanted to say. We are measuring at the center of the, of the crystal, okay? There is no demagnetization associated with it. I'm measuring at zero field. I'm measuring at the center. I really probe the other parameters. So here is a set of uh, six different uh, uh, cool downs. The, the uh, measurements, as you can see, is quite noisy. But you can see that, that at least if you look at 
high temperatures above this 1.6 uh, and below this 1.6 that the envelope is very different, okay? The envelope here is larger. And to remind you, when you cool it at zero field, sometimes you get up, sometimes you get down, sometimes you get something in between. So uh, this is really uh, first indication uh, that something is happening, probably associated with the order parameter because you don't, you don't see any, uh, uh, you, you, you see sometimes up, sometimes down. There is, there is nothing really uh, that, that is, is uh, so with, with with and 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 the and the magnitude is different. However, if you cool at low field, and here is uh, cooling at uh, 20, 25, 30, but then measure at zero field, uh, then you see that all of them, again, uh, related to the question just asked, they all fall one on top of each other. So at least for very low fields, they fall on top of each other. So really, again, measuring at the center of the sample, probably I'm not sensitive to any vortices or anything like that. I measure something that is, that is, and here it's important because this is a material with strong power magnetic effect. So if there is any magnetism, I will see it, okay? I don't, okay? So some intermediate consequences, which are the most important part, and I may stop after that, uh, because because uh, I will not have time um, um, to talk about the the, the pinned state, uh, but uh, we find that uh, the order parameter, which uh, we believe is the case, since it appears at zero field and and a very low field, uh, all with an envelope of the same 0.4 microradians. Uh, but as I mentioned, the irreducible group D2H that is the autonomic system uh, does not allow for a two-dimensional order parameter like in UPT3. So we need to construct now an order parameter out of two separate order parameters. Obviously, it's going to be a non-unitary state, okay? So this means that we should expect two transitions associated with the two order parameters. And indeed, this was uh, verified uh, uh, in Maryland. Uh, the group of, of uh, uh, John Pierre uh, Paglione and Nick Butch. Uh, here are uh, zero field measurements on several samples, and you can easily see the two transitions. And these are sets of transitions where the magnetic field is applied in the C direction, B direction, and A direction. And you can see that the two transitions are uh, obvious. We measure along the C direction, which give us uh, the best surface uh, for reflectivity. Uh, and again, the two transitions are, are obvious here, okay? So it seems like uh, with the uh, care effect monitoring, I mean, probing time reversal symmetry breaking, confirming time reversal symmetry breaking, and the specific heat showing two transition, uh, then the, we have indeed a two component order parameter. And there are then two possibilities, uh, either uh, for the symmetry of the two components, psi one and psi two. Uh, these, are, uh, these are the two with their uh, notations. It, it, it turns that if you uh, look at all other uh, 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 properties, and in particular, the fact that we could train the sign of the signal in the C direction, uh, then group, th group theory says that this is the preferred, this is the preferred uh, order parameter. I'm not going into the actual, I mean, how does it look in terms of the different blobs, et cetera. I think that the important thing is what do we do with such an order parameter that has two components? And as I mentioned, uh, if you want to see if there is an indeed a finite care effect, you need to get rid of the center of mass. You create uh, this bi uh, bilinear uh, uh, con uh, uh, construct. Uh, and if you do that, uh, then uh, this one, uh, indeed, will produce for you a finite, a finite care effect. In addition, uh, if you uh, remember that this is a, a, a paramagnet, which means that, uh, but no ferromagnetic transition at finite temperature, so you can write it uh, as a, a Ginzburg-Landau expansion, uh, but the alpha, the prefactor of the m square, is going to be positive always because it's above the transition. 
Uh, and then there is a coupling of the magnetization to the order parameter, the one that I just showed you, and coupling to a magnetic field if you apply it. In zero field, it gives you a contribution after minimization. Uh, it gives you a contribution that was shown uh, that uh, to stabilize the, this non-unitary state that I talked about. Uh, but in the presence of magnetic field, uh, it uh, basically gives you something that is proportional to the normal state uh, to the normal state uh, susceptibility, okay? So this is going to be very important if I want to measure in the presence of magnetic field, okay? So I think that I'm way over time. Uh, so uh, let me um, just mention that as you start to increase the magnetic field, and here is 70 Gauss, and here is up to 500 Gauss, you start to see larger and larger uh, uh, <coughs> uh, care effect. So if below 30 Gauss, it was pinned at about 0.4, it goes all the way to six. And if you continue this straight line, uh, you, find, uh, you find that, that uh, uh, it goes all the way to about eight microradians uh, that will allow you also to say at what field it will happen. And we will say that this is the field at which for the first time you have uh, the, the uh, what is called H star for the critical state. Uh, but again, I don't think I have time. I will be happy to talk about it uh, later and I will uh, thank you. But if you ask me questions, we will go back and I'll talk about the pin state. Okay, so thank you very much for a very interesting talk. So it's now open to questions. Uh, so if you have a question, then please just, uh, if you can either raise your hand or announce it on chat. So I can see there are two raised hands. Let me just see who they are. So is that right? Is it Tamahanya Hazra? Have you got your hand raised? If you have, then please unmute and ask your question. Sure. Uh... So I'm not sure if I if I if the if the answer passed me by, but uh, uh, in in uranium dietary right, what happens if you try to train it with an x or y axis field, and uh, do you have the similar data for in x and y field? So all of the data you showed was one training it with the z axis field, and then in the <coughs> no, presence of a z field. That's a good question. No, I don't. I I, I don't have because. Because right now, uh, the the crystal we the crystals that we have have the best well actually the only good phase for reflectivity is the c-axis, uh, and and at present uh, the apparatus is in a solenoid, so I only have uh, a vertical magnetic field uh, to to train it to train it with, uh, but. Um, um, we actually uh, planned because we noticed that uh, you can train it um, with very with very small fields um, <clears throat> uh, that uh, we may uh, simply wind uh, a small coil uh, and, and and do it, but we didn't do it yet. That's that's a that's an excellent excellent point. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I should ask a follow-up question. Is, is it okay? Yep. Ask? Yeah. It's okay. fine with so, me. <laughs> uh, so I have a kind of naive, uh, as a theorist, I, I, so I, I remember in the STM experiment, the, the, the cl easy cleave plane was 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And you're saying the reflectivity is easiest to measure uh, on the 0, 0, 1 That axis. This is, this, um, I mean, we don't cleave. Okay. We we uh, obtain the crystals and and measure them uh, as we obtain them and and that's uh, these are uh, we talked to the Maryland group to give us crystals in other directions but uh, we only got C direction uh, and those crystals if I turn it uh, the faces the other faces are not suitable for reflectivity. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. I think you had your hand raised. Okay, would you like to ask an, another question? 
Of course, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the, the talk. I think uh, your data are really impressive, both the UPT3 and this uh, yeah. uranium telluride. Um, I have a question um, related to the, the question I asked earlier. I think uh, basically because the point group of uranium telluride is D2H, the, the Kingsford Landau theory that you outlined in some of the few last few slides is actually exactly the same as for lanthanum nickel gallium 2, one of the lanthanum nickel carbides, which for which the smears are an squid evidence of broken tar reversal symmetry. Uh -huh. And in that case, um, basically because uh, the, the magnetic field comes from the spins of the Cooper pairs, what you are seeing is the magnetization due to the spins of the Cooper pairs lining up. It's not an orbital, it's not the, the orbital angular momentum of the Cooper pairs that does it. So, and, and in fact, uh, you know, you, you sought this theory, which is exactly the same that we, we worked out for Lantan on Nickel Gallium 2, which is the same point group in 2012. And in that theory, indeed, there is a term that couples to magnetization that lowers the free energy for the, uh, for the non-unitary state compared to the unitary one. And the way it does that is precisely by creating a uniform magnetization in the sample just like a ferromagnet, only with much, much smaller magnetic moment. So I think it's actually quite different from other systems where you might see this care effect. I mean, uh, look, um, um, I did not do the group, group theory uh, myself. We did it in collaboration with the theorists. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, um, I, uh, believe that the group theory assignment that was done uh, mostly by Daniel Achterberg is, is a correct one. Uh, you are giving another interpretation, which I, I am not, I mean, I cannot, I cannot uh, comment on. Um, I, I, I can think about, about it in terms of uh, uh, whether, whether we have an experiment, we have an experiment that is, uh, um, uh, can can verify or refute it, uh, but but uh, um, I, I I I cannot I cannot uh, um, it, it, I, I have to think about it. Just to clarify, I don't doubt the calculation is correct. It's exactly the correct calculation, but I think what it means is quite different from, for example, your, what you might see in stones and routinate or something like that. It's, the interpretation is different. Anyway, maybe maybe Daniel and I should discuss it. <laughs> maybe, yes. Okay, um, I'd like to ask a, a general question while other people are coming up with them. So you, you didn't mention much. We just heard about mu SR in, in the last question. Uh, how how does what you can find with uh, the Kerr measurements uh, come? Compare with uh, mu SR, zero field mu SR. Yeah, so so zero field. The problem with zero field mu SR is that the, they find strong magnetic fluctuations and and therefore could not could not determine everything. Note that that uh, um, um, I mean I, I I'm not sure I'm not sure what's the what's the reason. Um, but but uh, I, I think that are you talking about UPT three or uranium telluride now? I'm I don't interested. Know. Which which are you talking about? Well, I know about uranium platinum three. Uh, I know I... Uh, there 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 were there, there was a time that there was a bit of a, a discrepancy. I'm not sure uh, where it where it stands now. Right. I don't think there's any more recent um, measurements. Okay. I, okay. I, I just wondered if you if you had a, a view on what the origin of that discrepancy is. So, um, I mean, I, I I mean no, I I, uh, <coughs> I I I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure what is what is the the reason. I think that um, the the uh, I mean one one thing to remember, although. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing uh, in in the case in the case of the of the uranium tellurium two, for example, um, um, which you know they go to very low temperatures. Um, 
susceptibility is very large. They are measuring at a finite time, a uh, couple of microseconds. Uh, they may find uh, a, a, a strong effect. We are a DC measurement, a purely D, pure DC measurement. So this could be the the main the main uh, the main difference. I'm I'm not I'm not sure for your tellurium too. So UPT three, um, 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 I don't know. I mean UPT three by the way was the easiest material for us to measure because because the lower the temperature, the easier it is to measure. <laughs> For us, um, and and uh, I think that our data is quite quite uh, quite robust. Um, so why? I, I mean, you you should know. I mean, the, the, there was at, at, at the time two USRs, right? The the Amura that was positive. Uh, I think your your group was uh, um, um, maybe didn't see anything. Um, I I'm not sure if anybody ever repeated it. No, so, so, sorry. Well, just to, cl to close that. So I, th I thought it was maybe related to the presence of imperfections in the sample was an important ingredient in, in getting the USR signal. I see. Well, uh, <coughs> I don't know. Um, it... uh, anyway, maybe we could move on because there's, an there's another question uh, that's come in from uh, Peter Val. I don't know if you would like to unmute and ask it the question yourself, Peter. Or, or come here actually it's easier oh I, i'll read i'll read it out so is it peter says thank you for a great talk um how does the care rotation look like for a conventional superconductor for example in niobium i think you touched on yes you some... i didn't show i, I mean uh, we see nothing we did niobium we did lead we did aluminum you see nothing and in in a applied applied fields as well we never measure uh except we did a little bit in the uranium tellurium too because of the ferromagnetism. Uh, but uh, otherwise, we never measure at a finite field. We always train with a field and measure at zero, at zero field because we want to look at, at the order parameter. We, we want to look at, at what's intrinsic. Uh, um, but uh, I mean, the truth is that uh, if you take, and we tried, you take gold uh, and you apply uh, and from, from that point of view, gold, niobium, aluminum will be the same. Um, you, uh, you apply a small magnetic field and you measure, you see nothing. I mean, the only magnetism there is, 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 is Pauli and, 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 and uh, uh, this, this produces a very, very tiny uh, care effect. This is also, by the way, very important for those materials that don't exhibit magnetism. Because even if you trap vortices in, in, in UPT3, for example, okay, then, uh, then you remove the field. And let's say that there, there is remanent magnetization. And some vortices are trapped, okay? You will measure it in a magnetometer, but we will not see it because the Kerr effect uh, basically will see the fraction of the field of the remanent magnetization field over HC2, which is the fraction of core vortices times the normal state care effect because there is no magnetism and the normal state care effect is Pauli plus Landau and, and which is unmeasurable. So, um, and, and we, I, I could show you data that actually demonstrates it. Yeah, is that, a, is that answer okay, Peter? Okay, I, thank you, Peter, thanks you for the answer. I think Pierce has a question as well. It's a rather long one. I could just read it, okay. So Pierce, Pierce says, many thanks for a beautiful uh, pedagogical talk. Uh, you've mentioned symmetry analysis, but don't you think it is remarkable that the two transitions are, what was it, 0.05 K apart in uranium telluride? Doesn't this suggest a deeper symmetry that is somehow missed by basic symmetry analysis? Thanks, it, Pierce. I, who said, I mean, I think, I mean, is it, I, I, th I thought it's about 0.1. Uh, yes, it is remarkable. Yeah, I, I think it, it it depends a little bit on who who, who made the samples, um, yes. and some some do and don't show um, differences in temperature. But yeah, yeah, I I I I, uh, I I agree. I agree. So so the question was, um, do, you, do you think there's a deeper symmetry that's somehow missed? 
Um, so, I mean, the, 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 point, the point is that the symmetry assignment and the choice of that particular order parameter um, was done based on these two results. That is, um, take the time reversal symmetry breaking effect as a yes, no. Okay, so the answer is yes. And take the specific heat as yes, observe two transition, yes or no, the answer is yes. And now uh, uh, you take that and, and you construct based on the symmetry of the material, you construct something. Um, I think that if you doubt one of them, then possibilities uh, are, 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 are different. And then you'll need, you'll need other theories. For example, I don't know, maybe this, the spin triplet uh, 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 orientation, et cetera. I don't know. Uh, apparently there's a, com oh yeah, sorry, Jorge has just uh, come up with a comment. Would you like yeah, to? Yeah, sorry, I wasn't sure whether we're, we're finishing the session, so I thought I just typed it. But if we haven't finished, I may say, yes, there is a symmetry. But the symmetry is the, you know, if you if you make a spin orbit coupling very weak, then you get more symmetry than you had before because the SO3 factorizes from the point group. That's the symmetry. So if you are in that limit, then these two transitions become perfectly degenerate, and your broken time reversal symmetry is an equal spin pairing. If you then restore spin orbit coupling, they start to split, and the first transition no longer breaks time reversal symmetry. And we did a very simple but nice theory of this for the other lantern on nickel carbide, LANIC2, in 2010, where we did the group theory of this and we showed how there's a correspondence between the irreps you get in the this weak SO3 symmetric limit yeah. and the irreps you get in the full spin orbit coupling limit. And it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence, so, so you get splitting of the transitions. And uh, exactly the same will work for lantern on nickel gallium to and as I said, our Kinsler Landau theory also took that into account. And it's, it's, it's the same physics. So we've discussed this, this symmetry. Uh, it's SO3. <laughs> but we came at it from the other direction because from the start, we realized that there was no evidence of a split transition in that case. There was just evidence of broken the reversal symmetry. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, well, then it has to be triplet. And because all the reps are in 1D, then it has to to be in the weak spin orbit coupling limit. So we came from that limit. Then we thought, well, we should understand what happens when you have a spin orbit coupling because you always have it. And we realized the transition will split and we predicted maybe there's a split transition and we haven't seen it yet. But to my knowledge, it hasn't been observed in those systems. It's probably even even closer than in, in uranium telluride. Uh -huh. You can probably see, um, okay, that there's some comments from this in the, in the chat. Um, so we so actually, uh, there, there, there is there is something there is something quite interesting. Uh, again, I didn't have a, I didn't have time to talk about the pin state, and and one of the things that you can do with the Kerr effect, which you cannot do with magnet, uh, bulk magnetization measurement, uh, is that as I said, I'm I'm I just shine light and I see, I see what uh, how much how much uh, rotation or polarization I have or how much difference between the two circular polarizations. And and uh, this is this is different uh, when uh, you measure the the magnetization uh, and and uh, if you have remanent magnetization, for example, uh, then it has to do with all the currents uh, that are in the in the material where where we don't see them. We just see so within within the pin state, uh, we could show that that uh, actually the the vortex core must carry, um, must be ferromagnetic. That is, uh, there is a field associated with the core and, and therefore it pins the ferromagnetism inside. So it's quite interesting uh, if you try to match the magnetism in the core with the magnetism uh, outside uh, in, the, in the superconducting, in the superconducting uh, uh, material. I'm, I'm not sure what, um, maybe, maybe some spin polarized STM could, could do something like that should be very interesting. Yes, spin polarized STM can solve many problems. Uh, can I can I comment on Pierce's comment on my comment? 
Yeah, Am I allowed, you, Chairman? You, 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 you're allowed to. Can you read out um, the, comment, the comment, though? Because maybe not everybody. Yeah, can. so PS has asked, how can a spin orbit be weak in uranium? And uranium telluride is highly anisotropic because of this. I think that's an excellent point, Pierce. I, I would say, well, if the split is due to spin orbit coupling, then in this material is bigger than in the land and nickel carbides because we would expect the spin orbit coupling to be stronger. However, you're completely right that, you know, in all superconductors, spin orbit coupling is a much bigger effect than the gap. So they all should be always in the stronger spin orbit coupling regime. And I think this is a, a, a a puzzle in the whole field of superconductivity. For example, you take non-centrosymmetric superconductors that are not even strongly correlated, and for most of them, they they should be strongly in the spin-orbit coupling-dominated regime with very strong admixture of singlet and triplet. If you just look at the energy scales, but that's not what we see. Most of them are just purely S-wave, and there seems to be a a ratio of about a thousand between the spin the band splitting of spin orbit coupling and the gap to see the admixture. And if the ratio is only a hundred or less, then you don't see it. I don't have the answer to that, but I think it's quite consistent in the phenomenology of mini systems. And I think PS makes an, an excellent point. I don't know the answer. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, okay. Um, so I think we've still got time for another couple of questions if there are any coming in. Don't see any. Um, I guess I, we're. I, I, I will not be offended if we finish nine nine minutes before. <laughs> yeah, no. I'd, I'd, I'd like I'd like to sort of um, talk talk further, but maybe it would it would go on a, a, a little a little bit too long. Um, so I think probably what we should do is. Yeah. So uh, maybe, maybe if you could uh, go back in your slides to the, the uranium telluride data a little bit. Yes, which one? Uh, the, the one showing the, the zero field data where it was, um, you had a half a dozen curves, I think thereabouts. Yeah, this, this is the one. It's a little hard to, to, to follow the individual curves, but my, right. my, eyes, my eye picks out the, um, the curve at the bottom, which is in, in red. Right. Uh, and so in, in this curve, the, the signal uh, seems to have a, a sort of temperature dependence where it's peaked at about one Kelvin uh, rather than being peaked at the lowest temperature. Oh, uh, the, the, uh, um, <clears throat> I mean, in terms of, in terms of uh, um, I mean, in fact, um, it's, we, we, we don't know, I mean, I cannot, I cannot, uh, I mean, here, for example, uh, I can draw a straight line here and then, yes, there are some two points, uh, two points here. Um, uh, when we do zero field, especially in this material, and I don't, I, I, I mean, and this is different. I mean, you saw it, you saw it different than the uh, uranium uh, platinum three. It was much, much sharper. Uh, yeah. But uh, so that's why I only said that let's just look at the envelope. What's the highest? Because at zero field, it can be anything. It can break into domains. Maybe uh, there are uh, um, other effects um, as a function of temperature. I don't know. I mean, so honestly, I, I don't know. So yeah. I, simply, I simply looked at the envelope and said, well, look, this envelope fits the, the, the one that is uh, with field cool, but, but so, I, I, so, I, I so in in your case here with uranium telluride, you're saying that the domain size is small compared yes. with your volume size. Yes, yes. Um, whereas for uranium platinum three, it was large. Now I remember yes. talking to theorists of, about this uh, a long time ago for UPT three, and they said, well, why would you have domains? They cost energy. There's there's not nothing like I, a closure. With ferromagnetism that gives you domains. Um, ex yeah, so especially. I mean, this is like. I mean, this type of order parameters are like an icing system, right? Mm -hmm. A plus I B or A minus I B. I mean, it's really like an icing. So but, but therefore, the, domains should be very costly. I agree. I agree. Yes, domain should domain wall should be costly. So why? Yeah. So is this special? 
um, sim combination of symmetries that um, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, we do see we do see, for example, um, really single domain in the in the uh, uh, UPT three. That's the only material that we see beautiful. Every time is the same size. Uh, uranium ruthenium to silicon two, we see it goes positive, negative, half the size, uh, etc. As we do in strontium ruthenate, as if, as if uh, um, uh, there are domains smaller than than the beam size in those materials, but not in uh, UPT three. It's just yeah. a fact. I cannot explain it. Yeah. And just, just to check that I understood your earlier answer, when you said that MUSR had been done on uranium telluride, but it didn't show a, a, a spontaneous moment. Is that? No, no, no it, 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 oh, I, I thought that John, John Pierre uh, talked about it. Not uh, MUSR particularly, no. Oh, he didn't talk. No, there was, uh, MUSR was done by the group of, of uh, Jeff uh, Sonia, and they see very strong, uh, magnetic uh, fluctuations. In fact, they couldn't really determine anything because they, they fluctuate, the magnetic uh, fluctuations appeared all the way. So they, they, they actually couldn't see uh, what is happening. So this, they okay. were overwhelmed by magnetic light. And I, I was trying to- uh, so There was no additional signal at TC, that's- Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. sorry, I, I, so I, I'm sorry, I didn't understood earlier. Yeah, okay. I well, I think we only have four minutes left. Um, I, I think, yeah, we're, we're, we're it's rather late here now. So um, anyway, thank, thank you very you. much indeed for a very interesting and inspiring talk. And thanks to, to both the speakers. Thanks uh, you for, the, thanks for the, in, the invitation. I mean, um, Glasgow was fantastic. <laughs> Glasgow, anyway, we very much oh, hope to, oh, to okay. see you in person next time. Okay. Um, so I think I'll, I'll close today's session and I'll hand over to Pierce. You might have some announcements about what is happening tomorrow. I think the return to the, the, return to the schedule. Thank you very much.